This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. You are listening to Copy Chief Radio. Welcome back for another edition with the Copy Chief himself, Mr. Kevin Rogers. What is up, my man? Hey, brother. Good to be back with you for another exciting episode. And this is a hot one. They're all hot, really. But uh, (laughs) this one's got a little extra sauce on the side because this is a topic, Jonathan, that um, comes up when I survey people, my list in, in, um, the community at large about why, you know, do you hesitate to hire a copywriter? Uh, number one is, you know, they price, they're just confused about what it costs, think they can't afford it. And number two or three always is voice always in the top three. They're paranoid or scared to, you know, hand over their voice to some writer who they may have never met. Uh, and that's, you know, a big anxiety for people. So voice is a huge topic, uh, in copywriting, in all of content creation, because, you know, voice is everything. Like you, I always talk about how the most valuable thing somebody can pay you before they ever pay you money is their attention. And, you know, they don't give you much of it. And so you've got to really strike a chord, stand out from the crowd and, and create a bond right away, or at least put on a show. And that all starts with voice. You know, can they hear your voice? Do they feel close to you? And so today we have a special guest, Jonathan. This won't just be me rattling on about voice. Oh, yeah. Uh, Abby Woodcock, who is a a tremendous copywriter. Uh, I met Abby just a few weeks ago at Brian Kurtz's master class. And I'd known about Abby. Um, I know that she worked a lot with Ramit Sadie and that she's a really hot in demand you know, freelance copywriter. Uh, and then I came across this article she wrote about voice. And so I'm thrilled to bring Abby on today to explore this important topic with us. Hey, Abby. Hey, hey, how are you? Good. It's good to have you here. Thanks for, thanks for coming on and sharing your, your hard won wisdom with us. Oh, I'm well, excited to sit around and chat copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a good time there in Connecticut. And, uh, and this will be fun. You, you really wrote like an epic piece. This was uh, when it was on your blog, a three part article. Yeah. 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 Three parts. And there, there's more, more parts that have yet to be published. So, <laughs> so it's a, it's a big topic for sure. Yeah, it really is. What, what do you find? I, I know you about your experience with, uh, with Ramit, you know, beyond, I mean, you know, obviously Ramit Sadie has very distinctive copy voice. You created the style guide that his team now uses to, um, emulate his voice. You've written a ton of copy for Ramit and content beyond that. What do you, what do you see as the biggest hangups for people, you know, when it comes to voice? Yeah, I think there's two of them. I think you kind of mentioned the first one is that uh, entrepreneurs and experts think that nobody else can ever replicate their voice. So that's a huge hang up for people is I can never hire somebody because nobody can ever write like me, Uh, which isn't always the case, isn't usually the case. And I think for uh, people that want to write their own content and blog is the hang up is what is my voice? How do I figure it out? How do I sound different than everybody else in my industry? Uh, mm-hmm. I think those are the two, you know, big questions that we get about voice all the time. Yeah. So they want to be distinct. And, and how in tune do you feel like people are? Let's just say I'm a business owner or I'm an expert and I want to, you know, I'm blogging uh, or maybe I'm just starting to blog. Like, how in tune is the average person with their actual voice? I don't think the average person is that in tune. I think it really takes some looking at it and analyzing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think people's voice shift depending on, you know, what they read and who they spoke to that week. I know mine does sometimes Mm -hmm. when I'm blogging, uh, somebody else's words start to come out of my fingertips because I had had a long (laughs) meeting with them or or something like that. I think understanding 
you know, what is your perspective and what is your voice uh, can kind of guide how you write. And I'm not just talking about blog posts and copy, which is obviously a huge part of it, but your emails to your clients or, you know, even emails to partners, uh, affiliates, all, all these kind of things, you know, having a voice so that they know that it's from you and not from a, a VA or a template is, is really important. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's, and you know, it's funny because you think about most people never hear their voice, you know, where, uh, out there in, in, in the world, you know, in, in marketing and in business, creating uh, all kinds of content with audio and video. So we're hearing our own voices a lot. Most people freak out the first time they hear their voice on, oh, yeah. on they go, oh my God, do I sound like that? That's terrible. <laughs> I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, all right. So let's get into some, um, some helpful stuff for people. And by the way, you, you need to head over. Abby's site is, uh, uh, on life and writing. We'll, we'll link it in our show notes here at copy chief radio. Uh, but she has this amazing, um, download where you, she really goes in deep, hard teaching, Jonathan, you wouldn't like it, <laughs> 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 but like, you know, so much great guidance on voice and we're going to get into, you've got these seven, um, sort of, you know, uh, types of voice. And what I love about these is you give examples. We won't have time to go through all seven of them, but it'll be fun for us to kind of identify ourselves. Because when I read yeah. through these, I immediately saw which category I was in. And I was like, yes, that's exactly it. It was almost like a psychic reading. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of people, when they look at it, they'll you immediately see what you're not. Uh, like we'll talk about the, the last one is yoga mixtape. I'm totally not that. So you know, I look at that. I'm like, nope, not me. So it really helps you like kind of hone in where you're at because you can see yeah. see it there and see. Oh yeah, those people. I like those people. So I want to sound like them. So yeah. And by the way, great great thing you mentioned about being influenced by what you read. I notice myself doing that all the time. If I wake up and read a book or, or, it, you know, somebody's blog and then jump into my writing, you could definitely see the influence. Like, even if I was just say I was reading the newspaper as opposed to a novel, right? Yeah. I'm writing like a journalist, you know? Everything oh yeah, says, absolutely. Like, well, this is interesting. Like I'm all factual here and you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or if so, you're in like a bad mood, you know, your tone shifts and you don't even notice it. And somebody's like, yo, you sound kind of like a jerk yeah. in this. And you're like, oh, well I was kind of in a bad mood, but I didn't mean it to sound like that. You know, I was oh. accidentally controversial today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's cool. And, but you know, that is a good thing you can actually use to your advantage if you want to cop a certain style like you could just listen to somebody or read somebody to get the flow going right it's oh just, yeah for sure yeah and yeah writing as somebody else you know i'm i'm gonna pretend i'm you know kevin rogers today and and write and his uh, you know kind of gets you into this this mindset so you get rid of those mental blocks that we have when we start writing so yeah awesome all right so we've talked about the importance of voice let's dive into these seven styles um, sure. I'll just reveal a few of them and, uh, Abby, I'll let you say w where you see me. Um, I'll say where I see Jonathan mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll give some examples of other people, um, that are known in our, in our industry. And then I want to talk about your voice, Abby, um, because you have actually a cool advantage right now. Um, yeah, that we'll sure. talk about. So, um, all right, cool. So, Tone, cadence, vocabulary, you talk about all that. So number one is uh, the translator, you call it. And talk yeah. about the translator a little bit. Sure. So the, my favorite example of this, because it really like, makes you see what that is, is uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist. So the translator takes these big, huge, giant topics like relativity, you know, and Neil deGrasse Tyson has these like two-minute YouTube videos on, on this subject. So they take like really big, confusing topics and make it simple for people that don't know anything about physics or science or, you know, failed science like I did. Um, you can really understand what, what he's talking about. People do this in all kinds of industries, health and business. You know, you have somebody that takes all the knowledge of bodybuilding and writes a blog post that gets you started. Those are the translators in the, in the world. So. Great. Yeah. Breaking down the complex, making it really digestible. And, and, and even actionable. Okay, cool. And so, uh, and you've got, um, 
three different ones, which is cool. So you've got, so this is under the, the, the heading of, you know, authoritative. And right. then you've got the translator, the parent and the voice of God. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so yes. the translator is Neil deGrasse Tyson. The parent is, uh, I don't know this example. You said single, single dad laughing. Is that, is that a blog? Yeah, he has a, it's a single father that, you know, went through divorce, had some relationship problems and is now trying to raise kids. Uh, readily admits he made a ton of mistakes and wants you to learn from his past mistakes. So just like your mom and dad say, you know, like, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. I want you to have a better life. That's kind of what, what the parent does, uh, in the blog post. So I've made all these mistakes. Let me tell you about them so that hopefully you can learn from that. Yeah, very cool. And then the voice of God, uh, you say the voice of God is an uh, authority who shows little vulnerability, giving content in a Ten Commandments type of way. Yeah. Serious, cadence is long, the vocabulary is advanced. Example you give is copywriter Bob Bly. Yeah, so if you read any of Bob, Bob Bly's stuff, he... Uh, he leaves little room for doubt. So, you know, this is the way that it is. Uh, the, the problem with, with this voice is you need to earn it. So Bob Bly, one of the most successful copywriters, totally has earned his spot among the greats. So mm -hmm. he can get away with, you know, this is the way it is. This is the way you should do it. Uh, the problem is sometimes people use that voice of God where, you know, they may be in an area where there's a lot of other opinions and it opens you up for controversy, which could be a really good thing if that's what you want to, uh, yeah. cause you get a lot of attention out of controversy. So, uh, I would say use with caution if you want to be the, the, this is the way it is voice of God on any topic. No, no exceptions. Yeah. yeah. I would say Dan Kennedy comes to mind is another. Yeah. Example. Dan Kennedy is another one mm -hmm. for sure. Yep. And Bob Bly, you know, uses terms like, um, potty mouth, which it, yeah. it makes it <laughs> yeah. difficult for me to, to me to, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was I just read last week. He posted about, you know, copywriters should never swear in any instance. <laughs> yes. And it, it's like, that's a really big statement that a lot of people disagree with. But he kind of thrives on that on that controversy. He does. Is, it's almost know. like he's desperate for it. So God bless him. I mean, I, I, you know, I respect him. But he, to me, has a strange social presence because it's so obvious to me that he just really wants to stir stuff up. But yeah. his his minions fall, fall right in line. Yes, right. sir, Bob, you are so <laughs> correct. I do not understand what motivates these youngins. Whippersnappers. Whippersnappers. Pull your pants up. <laughs> was a, oh, and I was on an event for copywriters a, a, a few years ago where somebody had sent out an email, all you youngins, make sure you wear a suit. <laughs> <laughs> all the copywriters were like, what? <laughs> I don't even What's own a, a suit. suit? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I go, rent one? Is there a casinos <laughs> nearby? <laughs> ah. hilarious all right uh i want again i'm not gonna we're not gonna go through these all you got to see the the report but um number two this is a big turn so downtrodden is number two yeah. so this is kind of the opposite of the voice of god right so uh my favorite uh, as far as bloggers uh chuck wendig he's an author uh i love his blog but basically you know they're saying you know I don't really know anything, but we're going to figure this out together. Another one, James Altucher, that's really famous for that, um, is that I screw up all the time. I don't really know if any of this is going to work out, but hey, you can you can watch the show as you as you go along. So, yeah. Um, as far as comedians, Louis C.K. has made his whole career out of that. You know, you feel like there's a there's a man falling apart on stage as you're watching it for entertainment. So. Nice. <laughs> so. That's right. And it's, you know, that's interesting, isn't it? Because you almost feel like, well, how does a guy like that get, you know, following people go, well, they, people follow you because they've, you, you've earned their trust. But it, with comedy is you only have to earn the trust of laughter, right? right? There will be a punchline. I will laugh at this, but otherwise this man is free to fall apart before me. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to fall him into a burning building, but they'll definitely line up to hear him talk. Yeah, um, for sure. It, it, and in, in the article, uh, uh, you you give a great example uh, from a, a, a cool, I don't know if it's a documentary or whatever, but it's called uh, Talking Funny, right? And yep. it's the um, four comics, Louis C.K., Chris Rock, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, and the, uh, the Brit. Ricky Gervais. Thank you, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. And there's a great moment where Jerry Seinfeld's talking about a Louis C.K. bit that he loves, and 
he asked Louie to do it. And Louie's like, oh, no, yeah, I'm not going to make me do the bit, you know. <laughs> and Jerry's like, oh, I'll do it, right? And so he does this total Jerry version of, of the bit. And it's just really interesting to see how, you know, uh, an advanced comic who's so in tune with their voice naturally could take somebody else's uh, uh, joke, which sounds completely different from them, and, and make it their own. Yeah, and that, I just love that because it's it's a you see it you see voice and it's sometimes one of those things that's really hard to identify. But in that example, they're just so extreme. You know, Jerry Seinfeld is just this like clean cut, very polished comic, and Louis C.K.'s like I said, falling apart before you. And uh, those two examples side by side of the same joke told in two different voices, it's just it's so crystal clear where you can see that difference. So. Yeah. Super cool. All right. So there's five more of these. You definitely want to check these out and, and, and see them and see where you fall in. Um, I, I'm not somebody who I don't pay a, a ton of attention to to my voice. Like I don't have a, a hard set of rules or necessarily a style guide. I, d- I just know when something's not me. Right. And, and avoid it. So but um, where do you see me in this uh, my writing voice in, in, in your list here? Yeah. So number four is. Uh, the friend at the bar. So I like to use this one as, you know, somebody sitting down with you, you, you watch them on a video, you you read what their, their blog posts and you feel like you're sitting having a drink and they're, they're telling you something. So it really comes across as like, Hey, you know, I found this cool thing the other day and you're in my community and I like you. So I thought you would like to know about this cool thing too. So you're not, you know, coming down from above on it. Like, you know, I'm the authority on everything, but, uh, you know, you're just sharing as you go. And I, I've always seen your voices as like that. Like it's very casual and very, uh, you know, Hey, let's, let's check out this stuff together. Yeah. So. Kind of accessible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like that. And we, we were talking about this and there's a great point that everybody's probably it has a dominant one. And then there's like a mix of another one in there. Right. So I, I could see me as like friend at the bar and translator. For yeah, sure. for sure. It, I see myself. I always call myself the Dave Grohl of copywriting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I'm the conduit to the even greater. You know, like I'm not pretending to be the greatest thing ever, but you know, I I, I have those people on speed dial. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you that, break it, down. You know, you can break down those big, huge ideas and you know, big books and books full of copywriting advice and break it down and say like, you know, here's three things that you can do today to have better copy. You know, that's what the translator does. So like, you know, take this whole library of books and make a post out of it. Try to have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And my man, Jonathan, Uh-oh. you haven't had the advantage of seeing all these, <laughs> but it's interesting to me because I always thought of you is super friendly, accessible, you know, t- totally a lot of friend at the bar, but the more I get to know you, I realized there's a lot of anti-establishment, you know, almost a touch of voice of God in there where you're like, you, you like to take on, you know, things and, and stand up against them. Oh, well that, that's you see interesting. That? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do see the anti-establishment, but, uh, definitely I, I, I want to take on more of it, but I didn't see myself that way. I thought I was friend at the bar and actually I want to make a quick, uh, First of all, this is an awesome infographic, and if it's okay, I also want to link to this in the show notes because this is really cool, so I want to make sure that everybody listening gets a chance to check this out. But yeah, whatever you say, Kevin, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you are seeing these. Okay, cool. Yeah, I definitely see his friend at the bar. And then anti-establishment, number six, no more status quo, current advice is wrong, T- tone is irreverent and often snarky. Yeah, this is you. Short, cadence is short, <laughs> vocabulary varies. Um, yeah, especially in your poser videos. You do a good job of pointing out how people are doing stuff wrong and a better way to do them. Well, thank you for the formula, sir. But I, I do feel a little more anti-establishment. I've been like that since I was a kid, so you're, you're right. That is natural. <laughs> <Cool. laughs> the other part about the anti-establishment, it is not all you know, down with the man, but it's sympathizing with people that have followed current advice and failed because the advice is just not that great. So there's a, there's a, a subset of anti-establishment voices kind of coming up in the ranks, especially in the online marketing world, because there's just so much bad advice out there. So they kind mm-hmm. of sort through the crap and give you, give you the good stuff. 
There it is, that's Kevin. True. That's that's the that's the podcast factory which she just described. Sorting through the crap and only bringing you the best. I love it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You got the new tagline. The mantra. We have our tagline. <laughs> um, it, all right. So, Abby, where where are you in here? I definitely see some translator. I mean, you know, this topic alone, you've taken it down and made it so accessible. Yeah, I think I'm I'm definitely translator, and also uh, one we haven't talked about, which is uh, learning as we go, which is number five, which is you know as I learn things, I you know want to share them with my community. So I'm coming up uh, learning more and more about copy every day, and uh, as I find cool things, I I want to share them. So AJ Jacobs is a big example that I that I like to follow because he just tries mm-hmm. things out and tells you as he learns like hey I learned this new thing here's how it worked out for me and uh, that's kind of kind of where I see myself love it yeah I'd say that's very accurate Pat Flynn is another good example yeah, you do Pat. as that awesome Abby uh, man thanks for coming on this was super cool really valuable and yeah that'd be great if we could share the infographic um, yeah that's at on life and writing slash voice so super easy to to remember Okay, cool. We'll edit that out and put our put our URL in there. <laughs> um, With Kevin's and, uh, voice, so, voice of Kevin. <laughs> um, what is the and so let's give us your you know what's the one tip if someone's sitting there listening going man how do I even begin to like hear my voice let alone write in it what's like the first thing people should do? So the first thing is try and develop a style guide. And that sounds like such a big, huge topic that I could talk about forever, but it's a lot simpler than it seems. So just deep dive into stuff that you've already written and not just blog posts, but your Facebook posts, look in the sent folder of your email uh, Mm -hmm. and really deep dive into what you've written. And you can do this yourself. It's even better if you have a friend do it to kind of go through and look for phrases that are that are really uniquely you, you know, so your friends can pick those out and say, Oh, this paragraph, like I can hear you talking in my head when I read that paragraph. Uh, and then once you find those chunks, it's really easy to see where you fit in these seven categories. Uh, you'll see pretty quick if you're, you know, anti-establishment or downtrodden or optimistic. Um, but yeah, kind of just trying to, to make a style guide and make examples of, of your writing. That's uniquely you. Yeah. Excellent. Great advice. Thanks so much, Abby. Uh, I'm sure you'll be back on the show soon enough. And yeah, I hope so. uh, uh, Abby in Copy Chief all the time, mixing it up. And her blog is onlifeandwriting.com. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. Thank you. And uh, that's a wrap, I guess, for today. That's your job, Jonathan. Take us out of here. Oh, I'll take us. Take it away, (laughs) producer Jonathan. Well, thank you guys for the discussion. Thank you for the insight. Chiefs, thank you for tuning in, and we will be back inside your earbuds, affecting your brain next week. You've been listening to Copy Chief Radio. Thank you for tuning in. If you're digging what we are laying down for you, then your next step is to go over to iTunes, type in Copy Chief Radio into the search bar, and when you find a show, subscribe. We will be back in your earbuds next week. This is the podcastfactory.com. 